Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber and in today's video, I've got some really cute DIYs using some foam board from the Dollar Tree. And I have some special printables that you're gonna be able to snag over on my website. And I will showcase those throughout. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started with number one. So we're gonna be using some printables that I have over my website. It will be in the description below. You'll find the link right there to where you can get them. They're totally free. And we're gonna be using Dollar Tree foam board with those printables as well. Now this sign is super cute from the Dollar Tree. However, I like my printables. In fact, we've been doing a ton of printables over on my Facebook page. I do a lot of live videos over there. And so I thought, why not give you guys a glimpse of this and how you guys can snag them too. So I started with this frame from Dollar Tree and I had to use my scraper to get the little foam things out of there to get the glass out. It was holding the glass in and we're not gonna be using the glass in the front of our printable DIY with the foam board. We're actually going to use the glass on the back, but we're gonna pop off this cute little saying because you know, that's adorable. We can use that on something else. And we're gonna be using this one. So these are available on my website, like I said, and I'll tell you more about that in just a second, but I am using some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby and I got it from the paper studio and I just cut it to fit the backer from the Dollar Tree frame. Now the printable is was printed and it was scaled on my printer setting to fit a smaller area. So I think I did like 75% scale or you can do 100% which would make it a much larger size, but you can scale these printables. They're PDF files and you don't have to give me your email address or anything. There's no loopholes to go through. In fact, you can just click right on the blog and get them. And there's two different choices with this one. There's the buffalo check one that's the black and white and then there's the yellow and white buffalo check. So I did just glue down the um, scrapbook paper with the Mod Podge and I'm using my rolling pin to smooth out all the bubbles and we're going to make sure it's dry because you don't you want to dry it as quick as possible so that it doesn't start to bubble because sometimes the scrapbook paper wants to lift off. Now I am using the glass on the back because it is a deeper um, frame from the Dollar Tree. Now I do have an Epson printer. I will link that as well and it prints really well but I think that this would print on any printer that you have so give it a try and I'm using the foam board from the Dollar Tree to create that raised effect and I'm just using this exacto knife to cut out the foam board and I just traced it so it's okay if you can still kind of see the foam board but if you want to cut it smaller than your printout that's okay but mine fit perfect and I didn't have to do any trimming at all so we're just going to add the Mod Podge to our foam board and it works perfectly fine. In fact, I made a couple of these already. So they've been hanging on the wall all this time. So we did this a few weeks ago over on my Facebook page, like I said. And we do a lot of live DIYs over there. In fact, we do a lot of DIYs over there that are not ever on YouTube. So if you are... Uh, have a Facebook I would love for you to go find my Facebook page it will be in the description of this video now I'm just using some Michaels craft paint and we're gonna kind of messy paint this frame and I'm using a Dollar Tree craft brush now I am like you see here I am really messy painting this because we're gonna sand it down and we want it to look kind of like farmhousey weathered so don't be real particular if that's not the finish you want like if you don't want solid color just give it one coat and just kind of be sporadic with it in fact the more that you can see the transitions of the paint the better when it distresses but if you do want full coverage you might want to use chalk paint or not as much of this acrylic paint i was just kind of being really messy with it go around your edges as well and then we're going to sand it down to where the under color of the frame kind of peeks through and I just think this is a really cute touch to this frame because I didn't really like the bronzy color and I really wanted it to be like a farmhouse feel I'm using this it's like I call it flexi sandpaper I don't know that you can get it at Lowe's anymore I've tried looking I can't find it but you can get it sometimes on Amazon when it restocks but if not you can just use some really 
good worn sandpaper I wouldn't use a fresh piece of sandpaper because it could scratch more than sand and then just go over your frame you can also use a sanding sponge that has like an angled edge that would also help you get into that groove but it looks really distressed and just one coat of acrylic paint so we're going to put in our back with our scrapbook paper and then i'm just going to put the glass right over it you don't have to use a glass if you want to cut another piece of cardboard you can but i'm just going to go ahead and use the glass and make sure that your sawtooth hanger is in the right place and then we're just going to hot glue this foam board right onto the center of this little project here now if you love my channel maybe you're new maybe you're not um would you please consider subscribing to my channel turning on that bell leaving me a comment letting me know what you think but that is the other version and you can get both of those printables on my site the link will be in the description here and we're gonna get started with project number two. All right, project number two also comes with a printable template. In fact, here's what it looks like. You can get that link in the description of this video as well. So I just started with um, some foam board from the Dollar Tree and I just traced it out. And then what I did before I painted this is I actually um, traced out my mold or my template so that I could give you guys the actual how I did this in case you're not really that good at drawing. But if you don't wanna go get the printable, you can totally make this yourself. But I just use Dollar Tree foam board and I'm using regular craft paint and the Dollar Tree brushes. Now those metal handle brushes from the Dollar Tree, the bristles fall out really bad. So I was hoping to give it a second chance, but it was, it was pretty bad. And then I just use these rulers from the Dollar Tree as well, which I will in fact be using for a totally different project here upcoming but I'm using it to create a straight edge to add our yellow now I'm using apple barrel uh, black and I'm using I think the craft smart yellow I'd have to double check I'll let you know in the description but you're just going to want to use some yellow paint that looks kind of bumblebee-ish but I'm using this to create a door hanger for my front door but this is foam board from the Dollar Tree. It's not going to make the greatest door hanger, but if you have a covered area and you don't live in a humid place, um, I think it'll work for you really well. Now, I did only do one coat of the yellow, and I do use my heat gun to dry it. And you could still see the black coming through because I didn't quite get my edge straight. So I just went over with a second coat right there on that edge, and that basically gave me a pretty good line. So I used my ruler to be the line divider for the stripes for the B. And then when I got down to the bottom, I realized that the I wanted the stinger to be black, even I mean I don't know that it should necessarily always be that way, but I was like this is not adding up. So I did a little like band that was smaller at the top and that allowed me to leave that little strip there yellow, and then it was black white or black yellow. You'll see here. And then I just use the same craft paint to go over the foam board. And I'm using, I think they're artisan brushes. I think I might have gotten them on Amazon. But I was really over those metal handle brushes. Has anyone used those metal handle brushes and had a ton of like bristle fallout? Like it was so bad. Um, I was hoping that they would be really good to just like do the things like this with and not have to use like really good brushes because y'all know if you're, if you've been subscribed for any length of time, I don't really reuse my brushes unless they're the really good ones. And I know a lot of people like have to reuse them, but I feel like they're never the same once you wash them. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know if there's any brush tricks out there, but the metal handled brushes were awful <laughs> and just basically do your coat and then you're going to let that dry completely and then we're going to add on our wings and again if you want to get this template uh, I did all the work for you over on my website and all you got to do is print them out cut them trace them and you can have your own little bee hang bee door hanger or it could go inside. It can go in a nursery. I think it'd be so cute in a nursery. Oh my goodness. Okay. Y'all, I'm getting all excited just doing this voiceover for you guys. But this thing's turned out so stinking cute. Now we are going to kind of make it, I don't want to say like whimsical, but I will say this. My first attempt at the head was awful. So I'm just going to let you know this, I repainted this. 
but I left this in the video just so you could see. I did not like how it turned out at all, and I ended up painting over it, but this thing's turned out so stinking cute. In fact, I have so many foam board ideas. I've been making printables and templates like crazy for my Facebook friends, and I just had to share it with you guys. I don't know if you guys do the door hangers or if you do any of the foam board DIYs, but... I got some in this video, you guys. I just am loving the foam board. You know, you could use cardboard as well, but foam board's pretty affordable and you can do all kinds of different things with it. So this is what my version is of my little door hanger. A lot of these you buy like over on Etsy and places like that where they're completely finished and they're cut out of wood or they're raw and natural and you can paint them yourself. But who wouldn't know that this is foam board? Like you could totally do this. How cute. I was thinking. Um, I, I froze there for a second. I'm thinking. I'm like, I don't like the head. It doesn't go. So that this is where I painted over it. I was like, no, we're starting over. I don't like it. You know, sometimes we do that. Aren't, am I right? You guys ever start something and then you're like, I don't like this. And you just like cover it up and start over. I liked this version so much better than the little like version I did before. So I just felt like this just fit better. So I took a two by four and some Dollar Tree dowel, like craft dowels, and I made my own bow maker. <laughs> I recorded a video of how to make it, but it's so obvious how you do it. I mean, if you guys want me to upload it, I will, but it's so easy to do. And you know, these easy bow makers are like, they can be expensive. So you have any leftover two by fours and some dowel rods, drill you some holes and make you a bow maker. So I'm just using some ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I'm using a Dollar Tree pipe cleaner and we're going to wrap it in the buffalo check. I think it was a perfect fit. So this bee needed a bow. I mean, doesn't everything need a bow? I don't know that everything needs a bow, but I feel like door hangers especially need a cute little bow. So we just added the buffalo check or I did. And you could, of course, make your bumblebee have whatever colors you like. But I went ahead and went with the black and white. And I'm getting really good at this bow making, you guys. So if you're new to my channel and this is like your first time here, let me welcome you and say welcome to our crafty crew. But uh, my Facebook friends know that for the past couple years, I've been struggling with the bows. So I've, I'm a Facebook first girl. I was not on the YouTube first, so I have tons of videos over on Facebook. And um, I'm improving on my bow skills. So I'm pretty proud of myself. But this bee, y'all... It's, it's adorable. I can't even take it. Like, it just turned out precious. I'm like, this is so poppin' cute. You could even use this for, like, year-round. It doesn't have to just be, like, a summer thing. It could totally be, like, any time of year. And then, of course, I'm just going to glue on the little pipe cleaners for the little antennas for our bee. Um, and I do take the extra scrap ribbon and kind of cover the back of our, um, like, pipe cleaners just so it doesn't come off. I wasn't quite sure like the bond for the pipe cleaners, but so far so good. And then we're just going to add a little twine hanger or you can add this to a wreath. Like if you did a enormous wreath, that would be so cute to put this like on the side of it. That'd be adorable. But um, this is what we made with this template. So you can get this template to print this out and create your own with the foam board. If you're not good at drawing, you can go over to my website. I will link it down below and you can make your own door hanger too. I think it would just be so fun. And you can use that template too if you wanted to like use a scroll saw or a jigsaw and do it on wood. But y'all, I love this. Let me know what you think. In fact, I want to know what you think of all three of these projects. So the next one coming up also will have a printable and it will be foam board. This one is probably hands down my favorite. I figured let's do some every day, let's do some summer, and let's do a fall foam board. This one, you guys, does require like a few sheets, and I do show you how to lay them out, but I did a dimensional door hanger. So it's the flat, and then like the next one, and I use this tool called Slice, and you hold it like a pencil, and it helps you cut your foam board out, but this is what the template looks like when you print it out. So this is my drawing, but I did give you the printed version and it's labeled this way. So page one and each one lines up page two lines up 
well, I have to move it over a little bit, but it lines up and you could tape it down if you want to, but you're going to line everything up and then you're going to do, that's the first one. And so that's the three sheets. Okay. Line everything up, tape it if you want to. And then sheet number two is the next layer. So four and five, again, that's number two layer. And then number six layer is the stem. So here are four printables that are not featured in this video that you can also get that we've made projects over on Facebook if you want to snag them on my website. In addition to this one right here. So I told you I am a sucker right now for all things foam board, printables. I love giving back to my community of crafty friends and just giving them affordable ways to make cute stuff for their homes. It's just my way to give back. But they come and watch, they support me, that you guys share the videos, you comment, you do so much here, and it's just my way of saying thank you. And by the way, we are almost at 20,000 subscribers, which I'm super excited about. Like, you guys are amazing. So we're going to be painting this with a light coat of white just to create a base for us to add on to. I felt like the paper needed a coating of white. So I'm just using a chip brush and some regular acrylic paint for this. And we're going to do what I call like faux finishing. It's like paint techniques and paint finishes. So this tutorial is a little bit longer because it does feature a little bit of layers. But I think it's going to help you if you don't have like if you've not really mastered like blending and shading and dimensions. It's going to help you. I have a very long history of furniture painting. So I've done a lot of artisan faux finishes, things like that. And so I love to do that also on home decor. So we're using a gray called pewter gray and this pack of brushes I want to say I got at Walmart. Um, I ran out of the other brushes and I was not about to use those metal handled brushes and I'm using a piece of wax paper just to, we're going to dry brush. So use some wax paper or a piece of um, like notebook paper or something, something that you can take a you can load off the paint because you don't want to be really heavy with the paint you just want to like dry brush it on and be super messy like you don't have to be perfect with this at all because it's going to be layer upon layer and that's what's going to create the substance to your door hanger on the foam like when it's all said and done no one's even going to know it's foam board it's just crazy how amazing um paint can be when you just layer different colors and add different shading and dimension. I love the layered foam board look with this. I have a ton more ideas coming for the foam board. You know, I, I said it, I get on napkin kicks, I get on the foam board, I get on the printables, I'm doing farmhouse, boho, lemons. <laughs> it's, I don't know if you guys do that, but I, I think that just speaks for my personality. I'm a sucker for creativity. I love all things DIY. I have tons of creative ideas and I just got to dump them out. Just got to dump them out. But then my, my house looks really cute in the end. So um, I hope you love these projects that we've done. So one thing I will say is you don't have to be um, a professional painter to do stuff like this. Anybody can create these looks. You can see how messy I am with this. It's just about being light handed. It's about perception. It's about depth. It's just blending. It's adding in different colors. It's testing different things. So I didn't want to add any more paint to my chip brush that we use with the white paint. So I just used my spray bottle and I put some water on my wax paper and I just kind of toned down the color and it just made it look very like smoky ish. Now I'm using a combination of several colors. I'm using like a khaki color, a brown, a white, a mustard, and a green. And the green is a Waverly. I want to say it's moss. I think it's moss. And then that is a craft smart yellow. It is not the bumblebee yellow though. It's more of like a mustard yellow. So we're going to create a stem for this pumpkin. And I would imagine that a real stem, even though pumpkins aren't really, I mean, I think you can get white pumpkins. Pretty sure you can. Nevertheless, we're doing a white pumpkin here. But I imagine a pumpkin stem has multiple layers of colors. It's naturally going to, you know, have grown and it was maybe green and then it's got some yellows and it's been, the stem's been cut. And so we want to create this illusion of it being an actual stem. 
So we're starting with our foundation of the green color. And then we're going to build upon that with this khaki color. And you're just going to smudge it around and just smoke it out. That's kind of the only way that I can kind of explain these paint techniques is just like create a smoky feel. And you're not drying your layers of paint in between. You're just going to layer over layer. And then you're going to do a lot of blending of colors in between. So, and then I'm like taking the yellow and dabbing it. And then we're dabbing it on to our stem. And then we're going to take the brown and we're going to mix it with the yellow. So this is where you get to mix different colors and create different shades for different depth. So then you're going to pounce that on as well. And you're going to remember to do the edges of your stem as you go with the layers. And then just keep pouncing and pouncing and pouncing. And it's going to look funny. But then it's going to all come together in the end. <laughs> Like it, you can add the finishing touches and that's where you have that eye for what is, what do I want it to look like? And then we went around the edges of this with the dark brown and that is where it really started to look like a stem to a pumpkin. So again, if you happen to not be subscribed to my channel, maybe you're new here, maybe you've watched a few videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I love to bring a video a week to everybody. I'm really working towards doing a couple a week, but right now, as of the airing of this video, I am taking my first vacation in five years. So, um, I'm like, maybe I'll feel refreshed and renewed to pump out another video for you guys. But right now we're just doing, um, a video a week, which I think is plenty for right now on YouTube. I'm still new to YouTube. And, you know, I, I love doing this and I, you know, I do still do the labs on Facebook, but, um, if you're new, please introduce yourself, say a quick hello, let me know, um, where you're watching from, where you're subscribed from, and then don't forget to turn on that bell so you don't miss any videos. Now, all I'm doing here is the same dry brush technique, except we're using less paint and we're going to create those little ridges that you see on the pumpkins. But y'all, that stem turned out pretty stinking good, didn't it? Oh, that, that turned out pretty good. Now, this thing is coming together already, and it's not even looking like foam board. Now, I am going to add some black to our pumpkin, and we're going to add even more depth and dimension. And we're just going to take this on the edge of your brush, on the edge, just dust it around the edges lightly, just to create that pop of dimension. And it's just going to deepen the structure of it a little bit more. And you're going to go all the way around your pumpkin. I did not do this on the stem though. So if you want to add that to your stem, you totally can. But I think for me, I just wanted to do it on the actual foam board where the white was. And I did do a little bit of shading up under the stem, like a little bit of a shadow. And I know that pumpkin stems sit inside, but this is after all foam board. But I wanted to create some more depth here. So I just took a little bit of that black. It doesn't even look black, but there is literally almost no paint on my brush. I'm just dry brushing it and just kind of, like I said, smoking it out a little bit. And be very light handed. And then I did take the gray and I just deepened another layer of those lines there. And it just really creates that substance. It makes it look more, I don't want to say like it's more dimen like two-dimensional, three-dimensional. And then I added some white. And then I just kind of was kind of messy and just sporad like sporadic on the sides of the edges. Just It's all about layers, all about layers. And I just wanted to kind of create the cupping and things like that. So you can totally make your pumpkin how you like. Um, you can make a orange pumpkin. You can make a pink pumpkin. You can make a blue one. You can totally make yours the way you want. But I do have that template for you to print out on my website. Again, the link will be in the description of this video. Now I went into my bag of tricks and I pulled out my Easter metal words from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just using some wax paper here and we're going to rust this metal word. I do this on so many different things. In fact, I just did some Ikea containers over on my Facebook page where we made them look like they were totally rusted out. They looked adorable. In fact, I think that's what I used to take the pictures with this pumpkin was that rusted bin. 
So I'd use the Mod Podge trick and then the antique wax and the brown paint. And you don't even notice that the Mod Podge has kind of clumped up a little bit. That's what's going to capture the antique wax. And I use the Waverly antique wax. You can use other waxes if you like. I just happen to use the Waverly. And you're going to use a brush and just brush it on. And then once you do that, let it dry. And then you're going to add the darker brown, which I use the Waverly's. Um, no, I use Folk Arts Java. It has the perfect chocolate hue, but you can use the Apple Barrel browns as well, as long as it's a deep, deep chocolate, like almost like a black brown. Like you see how chocolatey this is. It's so dark. And I just blot it on to the edges of this word and it allows you to get this rusted look. Now I had some issues. I don't want to say issues, but there was a spot when I used the baby wipe to kind of pull it back a little bit where it wanted to come off pretty heavy. So I just took the brown and added it back. I think I clipped that out, but I wanted to let you know if you push too, too hard and rub or like do like that too much, then it will come off. So let your stuff dry. Now we're going to make a messy bow for this pumpkin. I'm sure you saw that in the image that we shared. And I always use the burlap ribbon and you can get this at Dollar Tree. I... I ended up ordering some of this online at Dollar Tree and I just ordered a whole box because I use a lot of it in a lot of my projects. You can do so much with this. Then I'm using a gray buffalo check from Hobby Lobby. And you're going to just random strips, just random cuts, no particular, like we're going to make a messy bow. So we're going to puff it up anyways, and we're going to cut it down. And then I got this pom-pom like wired ribbon. It kind of looks like a pom-pom. And I'm like, this has got to go in our bow. So I put the wired pom-pom. And of course, you know, we got to do that orange polka dot. So we're doing that. It's the wider ribbon. Again, random strips, no particular order. If you want to cut these down in half, you totally can. It's totally up to you. And then I scored this fabric at Walmart, you guys. I don't know if you've been to the Walmart lately and looked in their fabric section. Uh, but they had these fabric fat quarters and I picked up this one and the truck with the buffalo check and I was like, yes. So all I did was cut this into the link I wanted and then I just notched it so that I could rip it. And then we're just going to put that in our pile of remnants to make our bow. But look at this fabric, you guys. It's got the, the truck on it, but it's got the pumpkins in the back, but it's buffalo check too. Oh my goodness, it was so precious. I was like, we have to put this in this messy bow. So again, just notch your fabric and rip it. That helps your bow look a little bit better. I learned that from my friend Melanie at Southern Crush at Home. She is like stellar at bow making. Um, you should totally check her out. But I don't know if she has a YouTube channel, but I know she has Facebook. And we're adding raffia to this as well. And I got the raffia from Dollar Tree. So start with your buffalo or your burlap first, and then just start layering in random order. So if you've seen a couple of my other videos, if not, you can totally check them out on my channel. There's a bunch of other videos that you can look and see, but I've done a messy bow before. I want to say it was on the lemon slice. Pretty sure it was on the lemon slice. Um, I think it's the lemon dishes. I'll, maybe I'll link it in the card here or something, or it'll be in the description. Um, I like to show the whole process of making this bow because so many people have messaged me through that video and said, I have such a hard time knowing exactly what to do making my messy bows. So the fact that you didn't cut out any of the steps is really helpful. So I know this is a little bit of a lengthy section of this video, but I didn't want to cut out any of the parts so that you guys knew exactly how I did it. I did not create a pattern. It was just random picking up stuff and but you do want to layer in the raffia and the burlap as you go nothing else matters at that point it can just be random and so try not to go with a pattern just go with the flow and this is where i'm like where did i leave off <laughs> pom pom gotta get that pom pom it's so cute so just keep layering and layering and layering and then once you're done i use a zip tie you can use um the 
like pipe cleaner if you want to. You could use floral wire. I just found that with the thickness of these messy bows, that for me, the zip tie works so much better. And I use the white zip ties. You could use, um, they're like whitish clear. You could use a black one if you want to. Totally up to you. You can use one that maybe matches the color of your bow. I don't even know what color zip ties they make, but I just have clear ones. They're like white. And then as you get down to the end, you're just going to want to make sure that you have the front of your bow looking the way that you want it to. So for me, I ended with some smaller pieces to poke out in the front. So I did like the buffalo check. I did like the, the truck ribbon or the fabric. And then I did the raffia over that. And then we just tied it all up. So this is where I wanted my bow to kind of like finish its sequence was with the raffia. So use your zip tie. I do not close my zip tie all the way. I leave room to move it around so that I can fluff out my bow before I make it completely tight. So kind of like see how I'm moving it around and like just stretching it out and making it real messy but just make sure your zip tie is not too loose because you'll end up pulling all the parts out. And then once you get done, pull it around to the back and then tighten it really good. And then you're going to be able to pom pom it a little bit like into a cluster and then trim off all the excess and then trim it again as you fluff out your bow. But it turned out so cute and it was the perfect fit for our pumpkin. I had to like clear all the raffia. That stuff is messy. I don't, it's like glitter. Raffia is like glitter. <laughs> but the thing that you need to remember to do when you get done is like twisting and cinching and like doing the little things with your bow to make it puffy and cute. So I put my bow on the side and then I added the welcome. And then what I want you to remember is your, your bow is going to be very heavy on this foam board. So you're going to need to counterbalance the foam board. I use um, popsicle sticks for that. So I just put popsicle sticks on the back corner and you will need to test it as you go. Like when you hang it, test the counterbalance of the weight. Otherwise your, um, met, your hanger is going to want to hang offset. So what I did to create the hanger for my pumpkin door hanger here was I just put twine on and that created the hanger in the back but it also allowed to have a little bit of hang down it was really cute so I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos um, I love the foam board I love making printables and templates I love all the things remember to subscribe to my channel turn on that bell leave me a quick hello let me know which one of these projects was your favorite I would love to hear from you sprinkle this to someone, share it along. You know the drill. Welcome new friends. Welcome back old friends. I'm so glad you came and hung out with me today and I will see you guys on the next video.